All right, she's here to answer your questions. Joining us today in our Ask the Doctor segment is gynecologist Barbara Schroeder. Thank you, first of all, for joining us. We've gotten tons of emails about this, and we basically told folks, you know what, you probably have some questions that you don't feel comfortable asking your gynecologist to their face, so ask us, we'll ask you, and for some of the ones that are a little too racy, we'll just let you do on a personal level with some of these folks. Um, we probably should do a disclaimer, though, because some of these questions might be a little racy, so do be prepared if you don't want your kids in the room. All right, the first question is from a viewer who says, many years ago, I I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. I had a LEAP procedure done at that time. What are the chances that it will return? That's a very good question. Uh, the odds of uh, that of cervical cancer returning is very, very slim, especially uh, if she goes and has periodic checkups, uh, just like her gynecologist advises her to do that. And if she goes for regular checkups, we should be able to catch any changes very early on to be able to treat them effectively to prevent her from ever having to face that diagnosis again. Okay, this person writes, I recently had a large baby and now they have uh, a dog operation. Besides surgery, what can I do to correct or improve this? Unfortunately, there's very little that we can do for that. It is uh, just from uh, overstretching of the uh, rectus muscles. Some abdominal uh, exercises certainly won't hurt, but um, in a certain percentage of women that little defect does not heal up and uh, does require some surgery if it is bothersome to you. Okay, this is a common question we got. This person writes, I struggle with a bad over even right after a shower. Is there a reason or something that can be done to help? Yes, it, it could very well be. The most common reason uh, is a condition called bacterial vaginosis. It is an overgrowth of bacteria that are normally present in the vaginal tissues and for whatever reason, stress, hormonal changes, there can be an overgrowth of this bacteria which causes imbalance in the pH of the vagina and therefore will emit this odor and so my recommendation would be to see your gynecologist have them evaluate you there's cultures that can be performed something called a wet mount that can be performed where you can look at this under the microscope looking for a particular um, criteria that may clue us in into what's going on and then there are medications that we can give to treat this issue. Okay, this person writes, I was put on contraceptives to regulate my cycle. It has not worked and now I'm trying to have a baby. It's been 14 months and I'm beginning to get frustrated. What steps should I take now? Must I go to a specialist and what medications should I be taking? I think if, uh, if you've been trying for 14 months and your cycles are not regular, it is definitely time to see an, uh, an infertility specialist. Um, I think that there will be a general workup that needs to be performed to determine what is the cause of the irregular cycles and they will know what medication is best for for her problem to yeah, help with and, that. And Dr. Schroeder, is a regular cycle uh, very important when you are trying to conceive? Yes, it is because most often irregular cycles are a sign of anovulation and ovulation is what is required for that egg to be released in order for it to be fertilized and then be carried down okay. through the tube into the uterus. So there is medication to help somebody have a regular there cycle? Are, there are a number of medications starting from very basic medications which are just require taking a, a pill for uh, five days uh, in the early part of the cycle and it goes on to uh, using uh, injectable medications and then even on to in vitro fertilization. Okay. This person writes, my doctor did an ultrasound and told me I had a cyst and for the first time being I could not get pregnant. My husband and I want to have a baby, but I don't know if the cysts are done. Is there any medication that I should be taking? Well, you know, in the past, we used to put women that had ovarian cysts on birth control pills, and the theory was that we would suppress their ovaries, and this would allow those cysts to shrink down, go away, and then they would resolve. Uh, most recently, there have been several studies that have come out showing that really, oftentimes, you don't have to do anything. You just have to give tincture of time, and a lot of these cysts will respond on their own. My advice would be to go back, get a follow-up ultrasound. In my practice, if one of my patients come in, comes in and has a cyst on her ovaries, we will usually repeat an ultrasound after one menstrual cycle, four to six weeks later, uh, time frame and evaluate that and most of the time they will have resolved if they are still present and depending on the characteristics of the cysts or if they've grown in size then other options may need to be discussed. Yeah, Let's go uh, back very quickly and talk about HPV and mm -hmm. the vaccine of course that is now being marketed and we don't have a lot of time to, to really get into the, the details of this uh, but how many cases of HPV do you actually see in your clients and what do you think about this new vaccine? Well HPV is a very very common virus 
Uh, there are many, many different strains, and um, in the past we weren't act actively looking for it. Now we're using it as a triage tool, as a method to uh, determine which patients need closer follow-up and which ones are okay with their uh, pap smears. And so we see this quite commonly now. About 75% of sexually active women will at some point in their lifetime be exposed to this virus. Uh, I think the uh, uh, immunization and the vaccine that has come out is a, a great step, a great stride in the prevention of cervical cancer. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to take us probably several decades to really see the full effect of it, but I think that um, it, it, the most common uh, vaccine that's out uh, is a quadrivalent vaccine. It it's, um, uh, works against the four most common types of mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the bad strains, right, HPV right. strains, exactly, and um, it, those, those four strains are responsible alone for 70% of cervical cancers, 90% of cases of genital war. More. So uh -huh. I think that it is a very important uh, subject to breach with your OB-GYN to discuss that. And I think that decision should be made on a personal basis between you, you and, and your OB-GYN. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it, doctor. Yeah. And if you have any questions for the doctor, you can email them to askthedoctor at fox26.com. You can also log on to MyFoxHouston and click on Morning News. We appreciate you coming in. Jose, back to you. All right.